I think we should hoot it one last time. And just wants to blow that thing up. All right, so that's it. We just wrapped Hunicorn vs. the World. But sadly, that means that's the last project that Ken's gonna be doing with the Hunicorn for at least the foreseeable future. You wanna explain why? Well, my favorite car too. That's tough. I think it's all of our favorite cars. But after 11 years, Ford and I are parting ways amicably, amicably. They're seeing other people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cool. Like, it's an open relationship, <laughs> so. Uh, but I appreciate the support Ford put behind me for all these years. Uh, it actually was great and being able to do projects like this and the Huna truck and the Fiestas. Big moment for Ken Block. Cutting tool. Got to do with super rad but time to move on so today is my final time driving this car really <laughs> so i think we should hoon it one last time but before that i wanted to kind of talk about the history little, of this little car. memory lane go yeah. back through yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah this is like the equivalent of like scrolling through your ex's ig that's what we're doing right now <laughs> one, one last time before you hit that unfollow button. yeah yeah just <laughs> one last time before unfollow and block yeah. you gotta oh. double them up <laughs> here's the thing about the unicorn the two of us could talk for hours i'm more curious as to what john has to say about unicorn i mean what? for me unicorn because yeah, no, like yeah. yeah this was like when i got hired on jim seven had just wrapped and remember, I had my interview. And you go, want to see something cool? It sounded like something from like Stand By Me, right? So we go over this corner. Want to see a dead see body? Yeah. You guys want to go see a dead body? And he looks up and goes, look at this. And it was just a fender. He's like, and he's like, we'll show you. And he pulled it off. And that's the first time I saw the car. And I was like, this is bananas. And that's my introduction to Hooning. That was like week one yep. of working there. And this is personally my favorite car that Ken has ever built. Because to me, it's the most relatable. Because it's from the 60s. It's an American car. It's got a V8 in it. I mean, yeah, it's got twin turbos on it but it's still like it's the most aggressive looking car the presence of it it's muscular it's all those things it breathes fire i just think that like v2 is also like equally as impressive because it's like how did you take the craziest car and make it even stupider you know like you couldn't top it like the unicorn was the best car there was and then add another two times the horsepower so that's a good question v1 or v2 well i think i think v1 was a bit more relaxed and fun mm -hmm. right bigger power band and it had enough power v2 it just like everything it feels like wants to kill me <laughs> from the power to the fumes in my face it's like making me pick which of my favorite children. It's not nice. Yeah, I can't do it. You can't do it? I think for me, aesthetically, I like the V1 more. And originally the V1, when we designed it, I wanted it to look like a Hot Wheels car you would play with. I agree, like, I, I, I enjoy that look, but it's actually kind of complicated. The other one is just like ITBs with, you know, a yeah, scoop. Yeah. It is so like, Hot Wheels, yeah, you know, very like, simple, like, like that a, yeah, like that a kid would understand. Air go in, you know, like, <laughs> oh, high horsepower. Vroom, vroom. Yeah, you know, yeah. We talk about the design side. Like, I don't think we really ever dive deep into it, but so much work went into designing this car, and there were so many different variations. And we hired multiple artists, and in the end, it was actually Lindsey Ross who actually worked at Hoonigan and then went to go work at RTR, which is kind of funny because RTR was the one who were building this car. And we worked countlessly to like all the little stuff, like the fact that the fender, like the actual flare bolted on the whole way instead of like just having the bolts here. And when that, we did that, no one else was doing that. Like the idea that it was instead of like a full fender replacement, it just flanked the whole side. And part of the reason we did that is we didn't want like the heavy bolts around here that you saw on all the other cars. We wanted it to just feel like this big slab panel that went on. And think about how many renditions we went through for the scoop. 
like 20 different renditions. Like we built it out of cardboard. Like we did all these things because it was about just trying to get that look perfect. That was like somewhere between paying homage to like vintage racing and like vintage drag cars and all of that, everything that had scoops on it, but then also modernizing it enough that like it fit the rest of kind of what we were doing. The car was always behind schedule. We had these shoot dates that we were, everything was backed up against. So I did one test out near Charlotte and there were no body panels or anything. It was all raw, but we just had to prove that it worked because the way that the engine was placed in, because the diff had to sit up front, everything had to be quickly tested. So then the car came to LA to shoot for Jim Connor 7, got finished in the wee hours of the night. I went and shook it down in a dirty parking lot next to Hoonigan. Yeah. And so shook it down behind old Hoonigan in old downtown Hoonigan, LA, which means downtown like LA. a parking lot like this big. So then the next day we started shooting Jim Connor 7. So I learned to drive this thing. There was no real practice time. I learned how to drive this car making Jim Connor 7. Yeah. But so what's, what's your favorite moment in Jim Connor 7? I really love the water drop in LA River. slide and drop the wheel in just because it just looks so, so like the crazy. easiest thing for me to do just visually it looked good and you didn't want to do it you fought me on the radio on it you're like I don't want to put the car in the water and I was like it's What's a brand new car the lowrider shot is probably one of the most iconic things Randy's Donuts just looks good because the setup oh, that's my favorite shot all-time favorite moment for this car of all time I think it probably will be all agree three two one climb on well, <laughs> this guy. Everyone's doing the same thing except for him. <laughs> What'd you say? I said Evo Corner. That's like the move. Yeah, Evo Corner. I didn't know we were jumping so far ahead. Brian just wants to erase London. At some point, Ken and I, like, you know, we decided to see other people, and <laughs> Ken went and dated the Top Gear folks, so yeah. they made a video in London. I don't know, I haven't watched it. Tell me if it's good. Maybe be careful. Well, so you took a car that was crazy, then you made it crazier to do the Climb Kana video. Like, was it like, hey, we need turbos? Like, going into it, you're like, we need this already? Or did you try out? Well, no, because we, for Climb Kana, we knew the altitude mm -hmm. affects the power so much. Yeah. And with it being normally aspirated, it would rob it even more. So what do you do? You force the air in there to get the horsepower. So, and then, you know, because we didn't want to deal with intercoolers and stuff, methanol. And then one of my favorite things though was Gymkhana 10, doing all the things that we did in Gymkhana 10. But then we had the down day in LA where we shot all the slow-mo stuff because we had the phantom camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we made a whole Christmas. Of shooting fire. <laughs> yeah, a whole Christmas yeah. video that's how long? It's an hour long or two hours long? And Brandon Steinekert, the drummer of Rancid, actually made holiday music for it, made five yeah. tracks, and it just repeats, but it's all edited to this slow-mo footage of the unicorn spitting fire. We also did Tonuts that day as well. Yes because the Escort broke and we were waiting to fix it. So we were bored and that's what happens when we're bored. So Tonuts is an F450 driving around with the Hoonicorn hooked up going the opposite direction. And I'm just doing an all wheel drive burnout, tethered <laughs> going around behind the F450. What's your top three moments? Uh, for me, Gym seven, when you leave the warehouse from the all wheel burnout, and you come out like uh, curve to curve over the bridge before you get to the hot dog uh, cart. I super love that one. That I will great. not lie though, the jump in London in the underneath, <laughs> pretty sick. I like that one. And then I wasn't Chris. Allowed to jump the car. And I will also say when Chris Harris did his ride along with you, he was looked genuinely terrified. Yeah. That's that another good really one. Good. I forgot about that. Chris that was is... a really good moment. Back, top three moments. Number three, Jim Connor 10, the reverse entry in Detroit, you know, where it like drops in the slow mo and comes back. It just looks cool. That, that and reverse it's, entry is it's all time. Yeah. Corner. Jim seven. I really like all of like the really big shots where you're coming in. Like basically right as you're coming off the 6th Street Bridge, 
Yeah. yeah, six feet bridge slide on like off the six feet bridge, right? Yeah. Like you can see the police cars that are like blocking traffic in the back, but it's just like a cool looking shot because there's this like gone in 60 seconds type feel. It's also like one of the most iconic film spots in all of Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, it was. Now it's gone. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Evo Corner. It's just cool. Vin, top three. Oh, I'm not playing this game. It's all sick. It doesn't like, there's no single moment to pick out. I mean, I got excited watching Ken smash through gears in a straight line on this drag strip. So like, it's the unicorn. Everything it's done is awesome. No pick. All right, uh, top three, I would say the chained up moment in the warehouse because it was something that I kept wanting to do and Ken said, that's dumb, but it actually made sense for the Mustang. I will give him credit, I will give him credit. That was Brian's idea. But it was something that made sense for the Mustang because we had to explain to an audience real quickly that it was all wheel drive. Like that's what made this thing special. And still to this day, like that still of seeing all the wheels spinning, I think it's actually a shot that Ron got. It's just still one of my favorite shots of this car. Then Evo Corner, it just, it's just like probably one of the best filming moments I've ever, ever had. You know what, I actually have to say, a weird one is the testing and I wasn't even there for it. Like seeing that come back was just like the coolest thing because it was this thing that we built in our heads and then all of a sudden to see it actually work and like slide in a way we never saw the car slide. I don't know, this car just makes me happy all the time. All right, so I'll do the final ones. Um, Randy's Donuts in LA, just because it was super rad to do that there iconic spot that I've looked at most of my life. Uh, Evil Corner, of course, because, I mean, that shot is like what I dreamt about, going to Pikes Peak and mimicking what I saw in the 80s and early 90s of what rally cars did there on that mountain. And then the final thing actually was going to Detroit and finally getting to shoot in Detroit for Jim Connor 10 with the Unicorn. And actually the surface there was much slipperier than it looked, like the rocks in the tarmac were super slippery. So driving on it was much more difficult and we caught some of that storytelling in the Jim Connor files. But the part that I really enjoyed was being out on Woodward Avenue, right in front of Slows, like a place that I've eaten so many times there in Detroit and doing moving donuts around you. There at, in that intersection. See, it all comes back together. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? I, I, I bring you down with blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bring, bring you back, back up. Yeah, yeah. That's how it keeps me here. It's an abusive relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so in saying that, though, shouldn't we do some, some moving donuts one last time? One last time. I, I see a Segway plugged in somewhere back there from some was, production guys. I'll, so. I'll dust it off if I got it. I'll dust you still it got off. the skill? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I can still ride one. Well, look, let's, let's send it to its Viking funeral. I'll go get the Segway.
thing up. Yeah!